with a rock and roll legend. A man from way back in the 50s who brought us some of the greatest music in rock and roll history. He wrote it himself. He was a young kid. This is Maurice Williams. He originally started out with the Gladiolas and then with the Zodiacs. And he created some music that you are going to remember. Maurice, how did rock and roll begin for you? Where did you live? I was born in Lancaster, South Carolina. South Carolina? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I started there, and of course I started in church choir. I went from there to high how, school. How old were you when you were singing in the church choir? About 12. 12 years old? Uh-huh. Now, were you playing the piano back then? Yeah, I just started. Just started playing the piano when you were 12 mm -hmm. years old? Yeah. <laughs> Remember the name of the church? Yeah, First Washington Baptist. First Washington Baptist. The church still there? No, they tore that one down. Oh, man, <laughs> yeah. That's where that goes. So after you began singing in church, where did your musical career go after that? Well, I went, I went to, you know, in school, in high school, in the glee club. And uh, we started a group called the Royal Charms. And we would play and sing. And we started doing a lot of Brahms. And uh, I played at this club called the VFW Club. Yeah. The Veterans of Foreign War in Lancaster. started playing there. And then from there we went to the University of South Carolina side. <clears throat> and then some guys that, that were there, and they, they were from like Georgia and, and Texas and all over. We started playing all the fraternity parties. So I had strained up fraternity parties. For what time. kind of music were you playing? The, the rhythm and blues. Rhythm and blues. Mm -hmm. the, what we call the day do what? And all this is what we were playing then. They were, they were brand new then. And yeah. you know. <laughs> this is the latest stuff. This yeah, latest that's music. right. Well, yeah, that's the latest. And then I had, went to Nashville. Now you put together a band, though. Yeah, we had a group okay. and, and like it. For it. Now, I have all these guys uh, that you played with you. You kept them together and you, and you made this band. Mm -hmm. What was the name of the band? Well, then it was the Royal Charms. Still the Royal Charms. Mm -hmm. And then we went to Nashville. Okay. And then it was changed to the Gladiolas. Who changed it? Ernie Young. The recording, the guy that owned the recording company, Ernie Young and, and Nashville Records. He liked flowers. And so he's, he changed it to Gladiolas. And then uh, he liked Little Darling, so we did that. And he, now, tell me about Little Darling. It just didn't drop out of the sky. Where did it come from? No, no, no. I, I wrote that. I wrote it in Lancaster. So, so, my hometown. Back when you were just a kid back there. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a girl that I, I thought I was in love with, you know, and everything, and I was messing with another girl, and had two girls, and then so you, one left. You thought you could love two girls at once? Yeah. Yeah. Living there. Living there. That's when I wrote the lyrics to the girl I was wrong to try, but. <laughs> yeah. That's where the darling came about, that she had left, you know. That, that started like that. You, right. you recorded that song, and, and you, you actually, you published the song. You issued yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was published at night for a Okay, and how well did it do? It did very well. Very well, and then the Diamonds called from Mercury Records. They called me and, and, and uh, Ernie Young in Nashville to get permission to do the song on Mercury, and uh, we granted them permission. Back then you had to call the publisher and the writer. Back then, now you know. So uh, we were getting them the rights to do it, and they did. And the, the rest kind of history, man, because they, they went all the way number two with it. And, and then, you know, Elvis did a break in number two. And uh, it was good one. Now, you've written some other songs. Yeah, well, I did May I, and did Stay, and all that stuff. Which one came next after Little Dollar? Which Stay? How did that come about? Yeah, well, it's the same girl. Wait a minute. Yeah. It's the same girl? Yeah. Do you remember, do you want to tell us her name? Or no. Not? Okay, but well, you remember her name. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And she was over at my house, and we were going to each other, of course, and uh, she had to leave at 10 o'clock that night. Her brother was to pick her up, because she lived across town. And her brother came to get her, and I said, well, you know, you can stay with our little mother, your dad don't mind, my mother. Because the family was friends. And I, I was... Oh, that's how you knew that her daddy won't mind. Yeah, that's why I said that. I said, I don't mind, and, but he didn't. And so, but he came anyway, and she left before the time. So I got up the next day and wrote the song, Stay. You just got out of bed and that song stuck with you? Yeah. And, and you wrote it? Stay just a little bit How old were you when you wrote that song? Oh, man. 
I guess that's about what, 13, something like that? Wow. Somewhere in there, 13, 14, 15, somewhere. After you wrote the song, what'd you do with it? I could have sung the trash. Why? Why did you do that? I, I just, they didn't do that for me. See, back then I would get up here from one and write a bunch of songs. Me and Coffee and the piano. That was the way I went. And it, it, it was like, just, just turn them out. I was just throwing it, throwing it, throwing it. So I might, I like some I did. So that was the one I went to the trash can with. But I had recorded it. Okay. And, and her little sister said, well, that, that song had an hour in it. I said, oh, you mean stay? She said, yeah, that was just, I like that. Well, she's very young. And I said, well, you know, the one about the records. I knew that much. Yeah. And so I went back and took it out of the trash can. And I said, well, I know a guy in Charlotte that could really do a thing with the straw settler part. Henry Gaston. So I called him and uh, he agreed to do it and we did a record of it and what? Where'd you record that song then? And to come out with South Carolina. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, studio, what studio was that, remember? Oh man, it was all, uh, it used to be a TV studio. A TV studio? It was a warehouse, really, and they turned it into a recording studio. Now that song went to the number one in the nation. Yes, it did. And that's the shortest song that ever hit number one. Ever made them one. To this day, it's all that record. Still, it's just so beautiful. Okay, and then you had another big hit after that. It says that right, May I? May I? Yeah. Now, you tell me how that came to be, and you recorded that one too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then it went to Bill Deal and the Rag Out. Yeah, they did the version. They did the version. They did the version. They made the parts. What happened on that? The story is. How old were you? Oh, I was, oh gosh, when I did that, I was about 20. Oh, you're a man? 20. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I was married and everything. Wow. When I did May I. May I was a fantasy thing, and sometimes it's visualized in my mind. May I yeah. speak with you, and all that. That's how that came about. And see, what happened was, Marshall Seahorn produced it. He was the same producer I produced it. Do I see? Holy cow, and chain gang, and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, he produced this. <clears throat> when he produced it, BJ loved it. BJ Records loved it. So we put it on BJ. And time they hit BJ, they went out of business. Yeah. They, they, went, they went bankrupt. They went, they went bankrupt. Yeah. So <clears throat> that killed that. So he released it on his label called Diesel out of New Orleans. Yeah. Mm hmm. And it, we had a local hit at the time. And uh, located, I mean, in the Carolinas, and the thing that they had started calling Beach Music. So they hit like that, and uh, <clears throat> Bill Bill and Rondell got hold to it, and they, they, they liked it, and they did a bridge, and theirs made the charge. Yeah. Which was good. They they put the song on the map, correct? Yeah, they did, yeah. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was a great song. I love that one, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I love to hear you sing it now. Thank now, tonight you. you're going to be on stage in a few minutes. Oh, right? yeah. Are you going to sing these songs? For Definitely. Us? Okay. So if we, if we go upstairs, we'll be able to see <laughs> you. You'll be right here. Okay, let's go because we'll you'll be out in a few minutes, right? A few minutes. Let's go and do it. Thanks. Okay. All right. Let's go and do it. Thanks. Okay. All right. Let's go and do it. Thanks. Okay. All right. Let's go and do it.